good youtube it's your boy johnny finesse welcome back to the channel and today we have the top five worst teams in nba history imagine imagine you worked all your life day in and day out you sacrificed your childhood to play professionally just to lose all the time i understand you're getting paid millions but as a mental are you mentally okay like you like you're rich but you're losing all the time like when you was young you was winning all the time, getting medals and all that. Now you play professionally and your team is trash. Like, sometimes you got to question yourself, am I trash? Like, you feel me? But with that being said, if you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed yet or haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. We on the road to 700 subscribers, so I need y'all support. I need y'all help. We can get to a, um 700 subscribers by the end of this month. Easily. Easily. And hit the bell notifications too so you don't miss the thing again. That being said, let's get into it. In sports, we celebrate that like success. Too. We celebrate winners. Carving your name in record books is a tall and daunting task. If you no manage cap, to get at the top of the mountain, you will be showered with fame, glory, and praise. On the other hand, there are negative records, for which you don't get celebrated, but you still get remembered. When you suck, you better suck like nobody has sucked before. I'm pretty sure nobody said that phrase before, but it might as well have been the motto of the NBA teams that we're going to cover in this video. You know, Cap, because now, usually NBA teams, that was a trend where you could just swap the whole season to get the best player. But in my opinion, that's dumb in my opinion because it's like, understand, because that player can be change your whole franchise. But it's like, bro, it's like, bro, like this, like, honestly, there's like a 25% percent chance of that happening. You might as well play good. Here, we remember the five worst teams in NBA history. Five worst teams in NBA history. The 1997-1998 Denver Nuggets, 11 and 71. The Denver Ooh. Nuggets were one of the most fun teams in the 80s and early 90s. In the 80s, with Alex English and Kiki Vandeweghe, two all-stars who scored 20 plus points every night, they played great for years and were a perennial contender in the loaded Western Conference. Mm -hmm. When Fat Lever and Chris Jackson joined the team, what? and during the era of coach Paul Westhead, who believed in a run and gun style of play, they played the most exciting basketball in the entire. And it was the future, like that's that's what, NBA. that's what everybody the game does now. scores would often look something like 140 to 135. Denver's run and gun maybe didn't produce a championship, but it was a fun and thrilling show for the fans every night. Then in 1991, they drafted one of the best centers of his generation, Nikembe Mutombo, who was thought to be their franchise player until retirement. However, after several playoff appearances and early exits, Mutombo bolted Denver for Atlanta and the Nuggets mm. lost their main star. Also, prior to the 1997-1998 season, Chris Jackson, now Mahmoud abdul Rauf, left the team, and so did Antonio McDice and several other- He didn't leave, I thought he got kicked out. I thought he got basically kicked out. I don't, I don't know, but I remember his name. I remember his name because I, I remember watching a video. He did something or something happened to him that forced him to quit, basically. Key pieces from those playoffs. I don't know what it is, but in the comments down Matumbo, below if you know what I'm what talking about. What was left was a group of young players who would struggle to win against some better college teams. They tied the then NBA's all-time worst single season losing streak at 23, and they were 28th and 29th in offense and defense out of 30 teams in the league. After 40 games, the Nuggets had a 2 and 38 record, and they finished the season with 11 wins and 71 losses, Damn. nearly escaping the worst team of all time moniker that at the time still belonged to the number two team on this list. The 1992-1993 Dallas Mavericks, 11 and 71. Another there are a one. couple of different routes to have a historically bad season. GM Sam Hinkie and the Sixers popularized tanking in recent years no and dubbed it the process. Be really awesome <laughs> for a few years. Have high draft picks. See what I'm talking about? This is this is what NBA players do. Cause I remember Philadelphia used to be so shitty, bro. Then they got then they got Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid, and now they're playoff teams every single year now. and end up with franchise players was hinky's tactic that's why i'll be looking at the, the sixers like like they're not really while doing hinky nothing. sixers were bad deliberately all these niggas the 1992 1993 dallas mavericks are just out of luck their 11 and 71 record was a result of circumstance and an array of injuries to main players similarly like the golden state warriors this season who currently have the worst record in the nba after nearly winning in the finals but they don't. When was this? When was this? 
May 20. Oh, okay. So this is this was mad. The year okay, before. Okay, okay, okay. The 1992-1993 Mavs it's played without Roy Tarpley, a talented center who averaged 20 points per game before he got suspended three I thought this years just came for out. cocaine abuse, which was a fairly common occurrence in the late 80s and early 90s NBA. Then they lost their starting point guard, Fat Lever, due to a knee injury. A promising rookie, Jim Jackson, was also not playing due to a contract dispute with the team. And what was left was not enough to put up a winning basketball squad together. For a long time, it looked like they would be the worst team ever, but they managed to win their last two games of the season to improve to 11-71, and 71, if anyone can call that improvement. Mm -hmm. Next year, it was almost equally as bad, as they won only two games more, and that's why early 90s Mavericks are one of the worst teams ever. The 2015-2016 Philadelphia... This team, like, this is the team that I remember about the Sixers. 76ers, 10 and 72. In the 2012 NBA playoffs, the Philadelphia 76ers played Game 7 in conference semifinals against the Celtics and were on the cusp to challenge LeBron and the Heat in the next round. However, the Celtics advanced, and the Sixers brass decided that the group had reached its peak and that they needed yeah, Iggy, to love. switch things up. Fan favorite Andre Iguodala went to Denver, and Philadelphia got Andrew Bynum in a three-team deal with the Lakers. Bynum was considered the second-best center in the league at the time, behind Dwight Howard. Unfortunately, injuries kept Bynum sidelined for the whole 2012-2013 season, yeah. and the man who was supposed to be the next franchise cornerstone never played a minute in a Sixers uniform. That's that tough. season, the Sixers were still good enough to I compete never knew that. and finished with a 34-48 record good for ninth spot in the east being ninth in the conference is the worst position you want to be in as a franchise because no you cap. neither play the playoffs nor do you get high draft picks the next year no so cap. sam hinkey no general cap. manager of the sixers who we mentioned earlier decided to take the somewhat rap that's why that's why i'm feeling like the kings is never going to be that good because they'd be flying fighting for it a spot like that but like they never approach. get a good position he bro. traded whatever was left from that 2011 2012 playoff team and turned those players into draft picks a lot of draft picks hinky was deliberately making the team worse in order to get top draft choices he wasn't doing anything revolutionary and the word tanking has been around way before sam hinky but bro. the way he was doing it was something we haven't seen before hinky's tanking was so blatantly obvious and he wasn't even hiding the fact that their goal for the season was to be as bad as possible to get the reward in the form of a high draft pick then some hiccups happened along the way and life threw a curveball at sam hinky his franchise player joel Embiid, third pick in the 2014 draft was injured for two seasons straight and in his absence the sixers were absolutely abysmal while hinky didn't necessarily intend to tank for so long he didn't want to patch the team Boy. up for some quick fixes until Embiid recovered Hinky didn't want to be mediocre by any means. He was either going to be great or catastrophic. He realized that being ninth in the East wasn't serving the team's goals, and he decided to take in more draft picks and tank some more. After winning 18 and nine, I mean, he didn't, he, didn't, he didn't deliberately get those draft picks to be worse. He got those draft picks for a chance to be good. 19 games in prior seasons. Or he, or he just got those draft picks and then continued to be trash to get another good draft pick. Hinky's tanking up. took on a life of its own in 2015-2016. And the often mentioned word process became the slogan of the whole team. Trust the process was the buzz phrase around the team. And the fans embraced it as well. Often showing up with trust the process and in Hinky we trust signs of the games. <laughs> People wanted their team to be good, even though the final year of the tanking was especially painful. After two years of being bad, fans wanted to see some results, and in turn, they got some more tanking. That 2015-2016 team combined some draft misses, Okafor and Noel, along with unproven rotation players. They were young, and they were bad, and they didn't even want to be good. The 76ers started the season 0-18. Damn. which was an NBA record of 28 losses in a row when they combined with the 10 straight losses from the end of the previous season. They had three Damn. more losing streaks that year, where they lost 12 or more games in a row. So the 10-72 record is not surprising. Imagine just being on that. that the team ranked the last offensively feelings, and was 26th out of 30 defensively. I know that shit mentally hurts your feelings, bro. That shit Nobody mentally. wanted to see them play. But in all fairness, Hinky's plan worked. They finally got the number one pick, which turned out to be Ben Simmons. The process was flawed. It was arduous and not overly pleasant if you're a Sixer fan, or if you just happened to watch a Sixers game during that stretch. But the process paid off. 
Kind of. Due to injuries to Ben Simmons, Markel Fultz, another first pick, and Embiid, the process lasted much longer than it was supposed to. Philly hasn't won a title yet. No cap, though. Like, if if all of these players have never got injured, bro, But they have two all-star players, and that title could come soon enough. And if they do win it all, Sam Hinkie should get a ring for his contributions. Joel Embiid's nickname is The Process, after all. The 1972-1973 Philadelphia 76ers, 9-73. and 73. Shit. The 76ers the have another team in the about. top five. And it was the 1972-1973 Sixers team that held the worst NBA team title for a long time. If you know something about sports in Philadelphia, you probably know that Philly is a proud sports town with integrity. If you're a pro athlete there, you must know that the crowd will be on your side and cheer for you like crazy. And they will also boo you when they feel you deserve some heckling coming your way. If you're the 2017 Philadelphia Eagles, you will forever have admiration in the city for winning in the Super Bowl against Brady, with the endearing image of a drunk Kevin Hart stuck in fans' minds for eternity. The same goes for Dr. J, Moses Malone, and the 1983 fo fo 76ers, who were the last ones to win a Larry O'Brien trophy to the city of brotherly love. Mm -hmm. However, some 10 years before the legendary 83 team, there was the 73 team, also legendary, but in the wrong way. The 1972-73 76ers had an overall record of nine wins and 73 losses, which makes them the second That's worst disgusting. team of all time. To start things off, they hired a coach from an ad in Philadelphia's daily newspapers. We what? We imagine that the ad went, not a joke. Would you like to be a coach of an NBA team? Roy Rubin, a small college coach at the time, answered the ad and got the job and the $300,000 salary that came with it. Now, so you telling me there was an ad in the newspaper you wanted to be a coach in the NBA for a $300,000 salary, and this is in the 70s. So that three, like this $300,000 today is basically like $3 million. Like, Not bad like, for a newspaper ad gig. The coach saying, had bro, very like, little crazy. influence over players, and it was a tragedy from the start. Philly lost its first 15 games and 38 of its first 41. The players gave up on the team very early on. And all the Sixers started playing for themselves without any team basketball in mind. I wouldn't wish a full season like that on my worst enemy, said Mel Counts, member of the 72-73 76ers. The whole season is thoroughly described in a book by popular author and former coach Charlie Rosen. So if you want to learn more about this team and how it got to the point of abysmal, Read his book, Perfectly Awful, The Philadelphia 76ers' Horrendous and Hilarious 1972-1973 Season. This team held the negative record for almost 40 years when the team from the top of our list managed to lower the bar even more. The 2011-2012 Charlotte Bobcats, 7-59. and 59. Michael Jordan is considered by many as the GOAT, the greatest player of all time. However, when it comes to owning a team, Michael is far from the top. Actually, his Bobcats, now the Hornets, achieved positive records only two times since he took over the team in 2010, That's with two bad. early That's playoff that. exits. The best versions of the Bobcats slash Hornets have been mediocre. Most of them were bad, and the 2011-2012 iteration has been the worst, literally. Jordan made some very questionable decisions while being the president of the Washington Wizards, most notably by drafting Kwame Brown with the first pick back in 2001. Kwame was one of the worst Jordan top choices in history, and both he and Jordan were ridiculed for that for years after. When he became the majority owner of the Charlotte Bobcats in 2000... Damn, imagine Jordan picking you one of the greatest basketball players of all time and you... Ten. He vowed to make a contender out of them. What he managed to do is for the Cats to be in contention for the top draft picks by being in the lottery almost every year. Two years prior to the 2011-2012 season, the Bobcats made the playoffs, and that entire starting five was gone in two years with Jordan at the helm. He wanted to get better through the draft and gave the keys of the team to the young and inexperienced rookie Kemba Walker. While very few expected this team to be any good, Nobody could predict that they would be historically bad. The Bobcats won only seven games in the 2011-2012 NBA season. So the thing about Kimba, bro, he's not a playmaking point guard. He's a scoring point guard. And gave a new definition. And you see it on the Celtics, bro. He, he's, like, 
You feel me? He's a scoring point guard. To the phrase, sucking at basketball. Albeit, it was a shortened season, so the final number in the loss column was 59. But with the record of 7 and 59, they produced the lowest winning percentage ever, 0.106. The 1972-73 Sixers had 0.109 winning percentage. Jordan's really? team was awful across the board and ranked dead last in all major statistical categories. They were worst in the league in both offense and defense, which combined for negative 14 net rating, negative record that stands to this day. To this day! To this day! In next year's draft, Jordan and the company had the vision to draft Anthony Davis with the number one pick, but they didn't have the luck in the lottery and picked Michael Kidd Gilchrist at number two, That's a tough. man who still hasn't learned how to shoot the basketball properly. And they could have selected the likes of Bradley Beal, Damian Lillard, or Andre Drummond. It just shows that being good at basketball doesn't make you a great executive. We hope Jordan no is- cap. I feel like if you're gonna draft somebody, at least have the fundamentals of looking good and like just fundamentals, bro. To learn to trust people around him more. And then yeah. now the Hornets will be competitive again. Because Jordan still is one of the most competitive people on the planet, we know that he's dying inside when his team ends up in the lottery year after year. For Mike's health, we hope the Hornets improve. And they did. The metal bullshit. But if you made it to the end of the video, you obviously like the video, so you obviously gotta subscribe. Hit that subscribe button, y'all. We on the road to 700 subscribers. It's your boy Johnny Finesse, and I'ma holla at y'all.